Okay, so in this lesson we're going to go into Autodesk Match Mover. But before we can do that, uh, I have Premiere open, Adobe Premiere. Uh, now don't panic, you don't uh, require Adobe Premiere to be able to, uh, to do this, uh, but it is best if you do have some sort of video editing software and one that can save out a um, an image sequence of your footage and by image sequence I mean a series of JPEG images or bitmap images um, that uh, I I instead of a single AVI or MPEG or movie file uh, because that's what's required uh, in order to work with your footage in Match Mover. So uh, what I have here is just a uh, a small little um, uh, piece of footage that I shot out at my uni and it's just 10 seconds of me uh, walking past these benches and uh, up to the side of this block here. This is actually C block. And so um, with, uh, with that trimmed down I'm just going to bring that to the timeline and I'm going to go to File, Export, Media. Uh, now the export settings, I'm going to choose JPEG, the output name, I'm going to change that uh, and I'll just, um, just rename this folder usq underscore c block a. There we go. And likewise I'm going to say well, I'm just going to call it C block A and save. Make sure that's the output name. Uh, just export video is fine. Now the video settings, going to make sure that I have the quality set to the best. We've got use maximum render quality here as well. So uh, one of those is bound to, uh, bound to do it. And I'm going to make sure that export as sequence is checked. Uh, so it is, um, and if you look at the tooltip, you can see that uh, one image is saved for each uh, frame of video. Uh, now the frame rate that I'm going to use is 25 frames a second, and uh, that's because uh, I'm in Australia and we use PAL. So I'm just going to export that. Uh, and it's just going to take a while as it writes each one of those um, those JPEG images. So I'll just pause the video and come back once that's finished rendering. Okay, so we just finished uh, the rendering and so we have that image sequence saved out and what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to Autodesk Match Mover and in Autodesk Match Mover I'm going to come to File, Load Sequence and I'm just going to click up, make sure I'm in the right folder and you'll see that we have all of these image files. Uh, in fact, we have uh, 249 is the last number, but we also have a triple zero. So there are 250 actual images that we've got saved. So I'm just going to click on this first one here. Uh, and I'm going to set the frame rate to 25 frames per second. Uh, like I said, because I'm using PAL, and I'm going to set the interlacing to lower field first. Uh, it's free motion because we're walking around, and the focal length is constant because I don't change the focal length at all. And with those settings selected, I'm just going to click on OK. Now, if we uh, play our sequence, we can see that we do actually have the, uh, the footage imported, and we're walking forwards. And uh, I have the playback set to a ping pong style, so when we reach the end, it'll it'll actually play, play backwards until it gets to the start. So I'm just going to stop that and go back to the start here. Now there are two ways that you can um, uh, match move this footage and uh, and do the tracking for for this sort of footage. Uh, what I might do is I will just save now and I'll save this as um, uh, we'll call it C block 01 and this will be our starting point for both 
uh, both ways that we um, uh, that we can track this footage. Uh, the first way that I'm going to show you is using an automatic tracking um, technique. And we can do that by coming up to 2D tracking. Or we can use the hotkey which is F10 and go to automatic tracking. Now uh, delete soft tracks um, and uh, well delete soft tracks is in relation to uh, the tracking style and we can come back to that later on. I'll just go to the settings here and you can see that we have an awful lot of points here in our scene. Uh, if we wanted to we could bring our density down which would mean that we're tracking less points uh, and we can bring our sensitivity down which also means that we track less points and uh, these um, at lower levels are uh, what I would probably use if I if I was using automatic tracking. Uh, I personally don't prefer to use automatic tracking, I prefer to track things manually. Um, you can also track with grayscale or using uh, full colors um, but I'm just going to leave this at defaults and I'll do an automatic tracking uh, of this scene. So I'll just click on run. Now as I was saying I don't like to use the automatic tracking system. I prefer to actually manually uh, determine which points I want to track and uh, and track those points um, uh, without sort of using these sorts of huge point clouds. Um, most of the time I find that I have more control over it uh, when I do it this way and it's um, uh, it, it generally has a lot better uh, tracking. I can fix any errors uh, if I'm doing it manually. So uh, the automatic tracking uh, will take a little while but what's going to really take a long time is this uh, solve for camera because what it has to do is take all of these points and uh, all of these tracks and uh, usually for this scene there's probably about 4,000 different points and it has to take all of these points into consideration and it uh, places the camera in the scene in relation to all of those, all of those points. Make sure that everything is um, uh, is matching up in a in a relative fashion. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pause the video because it will be here for quite some time, and I will uh, come back once we've um, finished the so solution for the camera. Okay, and we've just finished the solution for the camera. Uh, now that took between three and five minutes. Um, and like I said, it's because we have a lot of points that we have to work out in relation to the actual motion of the camera. And this time around, uh, we have uh, 3,849. Okay, so like I said, almost 4,000 points. Uh, now, if we want to uh, get some idea of how these points are moving, and I'll just start, just click on play, and uh, you can see that the points are trying to stick to any sort of um, uh, any geometry that you see in this scene, or any of any of the actual background um, movement. Uh, so. Uh, if you want to get uh, more of a sort of a 3D representation of how the points have been tracked, we can go up here and click on this 3D button. Now it, it looks like the button is saying that this is our 3D view and if we click on it, it looks like it goes to a 2D view. Uh, but um, I think the button is probably referring to the, to the view that you're going to rather than the view that you're in at the moment because this definitely looks like a 3D view to me. Uh, but most uh, most people will refer to this as R2D view simply because of this little button up here. Uh, but in this view, you can see that we can orbit around sort of as uh, as you can in Maya, and you can see that we have all these little cones in the scene. And if we uh, just uh, go back a bit, we can see that there's our camera right there. And if we um, go back to the start and press play, you can see that the camera is actually moving through this scene here. And it is, um, it's moving through this sort of 
this point cloud, this uh, this cloud of, of uh, different cones, and uh, the points aren't moving. It's uh, it's actually estimating how the camera is moving through these sets of points. I'm just going to stop that, and if we orbit around, you can see that we have uh, we have a sort of a setup here of these sorts of uh, these points along here, and these points here. So this could be considered the wall that we have in our scene. Uh, so if we look at the background plate, we can consider it this wall here. And we have these points along in this sort of rectangle here, which we can sort of think of as being the ground plane that we have in our image. Uh, now, as well as these, if we go back to the first um, frame of our, of our scene, we do have a few points that don't seem to make much sense. Uh, we've got these cones which appear behind the camera. Now how it tracks cones behind the camera, I'm not sure. And if we hover over these cones, you can see that it actually considers this cone to be representative of uh, one of these points here. So yeah, around there, somewhere. It's actually hard to sort of yeah, that point there. Um, and so it actually considers that that point is behind the camera. Uh, we also have these points along here, which are actually behind what we would consider the wall. Uh, and these might be a result of reflections in the glass, and it's trying to actually uh, map out the um, uh, the geometry that it sees in these windows, which are actually reflections of geometry off over on this side. Uh, and overall we have a lot of points which are sort of in the wrong place. Um, this is because uh, the automatic tracking just takes in a lot of information. It, it tries to um, map out the scene by more or less throwing a tracking point on everything it can. Um, and some of these tracking points aren't the best. They're not the um, they're not the best tracking points to actually follow along with. Now, if you want to see how these tracking points um, look when you're actually looking through the camera, what we can do is we can tap the C key, and you can also get that by going up to View, and it's under Lock on Camera here, tapping the C key, uh, and this actually uh, puts the uh, our working cam uh, in the same place as the scene cam and looking out in the same direction uh, and locks it to that camera as we play and if we play now you can see that we have this sort of this forest of cones that we're that we're walking through uh, now a lot of these these cones you can see that they're intersecting with the camera we're actually uh, walking through uh, a dense sort of uh, bundle of these. Now, we know that there isn't any actual geometry that the camera is intersecting, so we know that a lot of these points are in fact false. They're actually in the wrong place. So, um, what we can do is, uh, there's not a lot of ways to fix this up once we do it automatically. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to compare this scene uh, with the scene when we do the tracking manually, uh, which is my preferred method. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go up to File and Export, and I'm going to export as a Maya ASCII file. Uh, I'm going to export the cameras, the 3D points, uh, the distortion grid, uh, I'm going to animate simply the camera, not the scene, because I don't want these points moving around. Uh, and everything else looks fine. And what I will do is I will save it as cblockauto01.ma. And I'll save that. And uh, yes, I'll replace that. That's just one I did in a previous lesson, uh, or a previous recording. Uh, now, in the next lesson, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to where we first imported our footage and I'm going to go through and I'm going to manually decide which points I want to track and then we're going to track those points manually and uh, fix that up as we go. So I'll see you for that lesson.